trying to uh, assess uh, the various kinds of people in this country is uh, at the very least fascinating and tonight we're going to try and assess the Jews in America which is the title of the book we're going to talk about and with me to talk about the Jew in America is Max Dumont the author. Uh, Mr. Dumont uh, do we need another book on Jews in America? There's been a lot of them I think. Yes but this book uh, I think a book like the type I wrote is absolutely needed. A reassessment of uh, the Jews in America beginning with colonial time and especially an understanding of why the American Jew is different from all other previous Jews in Jewish history. American Jews have developed differently, American Judaism has developed differently and all because of America provided a totally different atmosphere, a totally different milieu for a new Jew and for a new Judaism to emerge. But maybe uh, when people change, maybe, maybe they no longer stay the original format. Uh, is it fair to still call them Jews then? Yes, absolutely. So Montaigne, the French philosopher Mont Montaigne once said that the more things change, the more they remain the same. That Judaism has always changed. That is why we Jews are here after 4,000 years, whereas all the other big civilizations and nations have disappeared. And the trick is to be able to change the bathwater but keep the baby. I, I'm going to say some things to you which I, I know will probably sound uh, uh, anti-Semitic and all those things. I don't you, uh, worry about uh, that. You go ahead. My and audience ask. knows I'm not, but I want to represent some feelings. Please, go ahead. One of the feelings is why do we spend so much time talking about Jews and Judaism? That for what, how many Jews are there in the world? Twelve million. Twelve million. It's a very small number of any group of people. Is that yes. correct? They seem to occupy an inordinate amount of time uh, and on tension. For a very in this good reason. Okay. Who else has produced the concept of God, Abraham, Moses, Isaiah, Jesus, Marx, Spinoza, Freud, Einstein? These are all people who have shaken the world with their ideas. And all these people came from this small people representing one half of one percent of the world population. And yet they have produced their ideas which have given the foundation for what we call civilization, giving birth to Christianity, birth to Mohammedanism, birth to all the great ideas that have shaped the world. They're interesting, that's why. <clears throat> Let's talk about oil and politics in the Mideast. Now, Go ahead. It seems that, that we may be forced, and I say we, the West, anybody who needs oil, may be forced into a drastically different realignment with Israel because Israel doesn't have the oil that her Arab enemies have. The whole thing is a phony setup. Look at it this way. Uh, the Balfour Declaration, which is supposed to have given Jews a state of Israel, actually was better to the Arabs than to the Jews. Before World War I, there was not a single Arab state in the whole world. After World War I, with the Balfour Declaration, there suddenly are 22 independent Arab states who have a total land mass of 4,600,000 square miles. That is 1,600,000 more square miles than the United States has. And Israel got only one lousy state of 8,000 square miles. Now to tell that the Arab world depends on this 8,000 square miles, which represents one two hundredths of one percent, is ridiculous. If you defeat Israel and you give every Arab <coughs> in the world <coughs> excuse me, one square inch of Israel, what will have changed? Nothing. <coughs> well, that's, the whole situation won't be changed. That's, that's my feeling, and yeah. I, as you, I think you just have to look at a map and ask why yeah, do they want to create such right a... Right now, it's a good politics, and it's good, uh, and it's good headlines, but it's a phony ish issue. Okay, but why again? Why the Jews? <coughs> why are they the subject of a worldwide controversy? Because Jerusalem is in the headlines. Jerusalem today, everybody wants Jerusalem. You see a prophetic prophecy fulfilled, and that is, as Isaiah said 2,600 years ago, that from Jerusalem will come forth the law, that it may very well be an international citadel, a humanistic citadel for the new uh, kind of concepts that are emerging. Your book that you've written, Jews in America. Uh, but I want to go back to this uh, oil issue. Okay. Uh, I don't think for a moment that America will sell out Israel for a couple of barrels of oil. I don't think that's an issue at all. If Israel disappears tomorrow, oil, gasoline won't go down one penny. Do you think that the Arabs will lower it from $16 a barrel to $3 a barrel because they have Israel? Baloney. They will get as much money as they possibly can. That's good business for them. I think they're stupid. They are killing the goose that's laying the golden egg. Israel is a side issue. 
And I don't for a moment believe that America will sell out Israel for a phony issue. On a personal belt, where, where were you born and raised? I was born of all places in Helsinki, Finland. Really? Yes, there are about 300 Jewish families in all of Finland and about 12 Finnish Jews in America, and I'm one of them. Really? When did yes. you come to this country? I came in 1930 from as Helsinki. A, as a child? or? Yes, as a child. Yeah, and grew up where? Grew up in Cleveland, <coughs> Ohio. I came just when the Depression settled in America, but I had nothing to do with it, please believe me. <laughs> what did you do then? What was your first job as a Selling young Selling shoes for Tom McCann in Cleveland, Ohio, ladies' shoes. Yeah. And there I learned uh, tolerance, because if there's anybody more difficult to please, it's a lady who buys shoes. <laughs> How did you get from selling shoes to writing books? Oh boy, I would say it's... <laughs> <laughs> It's a freedom of America. You can Wonderful, make of yourself whatever you want. Right. I sold shoes, I did everything, I educated myself, and the baptismal funds of America are in the public schools and colleges. And that's the way to success. Fantastic. Well, Mr. DeMott, thanks very much. Loved having you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Charming guest. Jews in America. We'll be right back. <laughs>